Hello everyone and welcome to another strategy session on uh, the Grand Arena. Uh, today is day two of the 3v3 battles and uh, before we jump into the uh, um, the actual battle itself, uh, I want to talk a little bit more about some of the uh, strategies that I use for, uh, uh, for creating my offensive teams. Now in the previous video that I uploaded, I talked a little bit about setting templates under squad management for both the defense and offense. Now on defense, these templates are really important because you want to plan out your uh, uh, what your opponent is going to face. So uh, modding these guys are uh, is, is extremely important uh, in a specific way. But on offense, even though I have this tab that I created for offense, a lot of times things don't exactly go according to plan and you, you need to improvise uh, if you... Uh, fail to take down a particular team on offense um, and you have to go in with another team it might require special characters or if you clear a section and you and you open up a new section and you find some weird team compositions you can't exactly uh, go with set templates that you already have you sometimes need, need to improvise and uh, go in with uh, with a unique composition so what i like to do is i, I have created these different tabs under squad management for uh, specific roles which helps me uh, uh, improvise on the fly and and make up teams as i uh, as i go along in the battle so for example i have uh, one tab for universal leaders and uh, you know obviously we have faction based leaders which are which give special bonuses according to the faction uh, but uh, you also have some universal leaders which uh, span across all the factions and uh, these are really useful in bringing uh, together uh, multiple teams from different factions together under one uh, lead and still take advantage of at least some form of bonus. Uh, obviously, the, the best one of them all is Rex, uh, gives a, a turn meter on crit as well as uh, 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 you know tenacity up and all that. It's a, He's a really good leader and, and probably one of the best uh, uh, universal leaders out there. You've got uh, damage-based leaders like Boba, Dengar, and Sid, who uh, you know boost up your critical damage, um, and this spans across all factions. So, in case you want to take in a DPS team, uh, these guys would uh, would do a really good job in uh, in leading that team. You've got evasion based leads like uh, Old Ben, uh, Duku, and uh, a little bit Talia's lead also is uh, evasion based for uh, non Knight sisters. Uh, you've got defensive based teams if you want to uh, uh, either keep these on defense or if you want to uh, go in with the uh, uh, against a team which has high DPS. You've got Savage, um, uh, Strong to Vahan, Fives, who give some amount of defense, and then uh, Barris, who's uh, who's usually not kept in the lead, but she gives some amount of health regeneration on, on her lead as well. And then you've got some uh, utility leaders uh, whose lead spans across all factions. Um, you've got... Uh, um, IG-88, who uh, I believe gives extra crit chance. You've got Phasma, who calls assists from all factions, not just the first uh, first order. The chance is a little more for first order to assist, but uh, you can put any tunes under there and they'll all end up assisting. Um, Wampa is really good to put under Phasma, uh, along with a few other characters. Um, you've got, uh, and then you've got some stealth and anti-stealth base leads in uh, in Tebow and Plo. Um, so those are just uh, just a quick overview of uh, you know the the universal leader tab. And then in terms of uh, controlling the battle, uh, once you've populated a leader, you've, you've got to decide the rest of the team. Um, and uh, you want uh, teams which can uh, control the battle uh, extremely well. And there are various ways to do it. You can stun, daze, um, dispel the uh, opponents, uh, revive, and then apply tenacity down. And I'll talk briefly about uh, each of these uh, methods of controlling. Uh, the best and most effective method of controlling is stunning. It uh, just takes a tune out of the picture right away for one full turn and gives you a little more time to uh, to um, do your thing. Um, and I have uh, I've got these in a, uh, in a specific order, and I'll talk about each of these. Um, the first row over here is... Uh, the stun and shock combination. Now, uh, the best stun in the game uh, is no doubt uh, uh, Emperor Palpatine. Uh, he's, I believe, the only one with a with a mass AOE stun, and he's supported by a bunch of characters who uh, uh, also apply shock. Just because uh, any character who's who's shocked on the enemy team, when uh, uh, when Palp does his uh, AOE stun, it shocks them for it stuns them for two turns, which is uh, 
which is really doubly effective in taking the the enemy out of the battle. So I typically like like to run Dark Bastila and uh, an EP um, because of the shock synergy. Um, if I had my uh, um, my assassin geared a little more, I'd probably use her a little more. Uh, Duku, I usually like to run in a separate team with either Savage or with my B Sith, with either Savage Maul or or uh, uh, by Duku lead by himself. But uh, but his shock synergy is also uh, syncs very well with the. Uh, with Dark Basti and uh, an EP, so that's uh, the one level of uh, stunners which which also shock, and then the second row is uh, uh, stunners who can uh, stun on their basic. Now this is an extremely important skill to have because a lot of time because of ability block or cooldown reduction, you're not always going to have uh, your stuns which are available on special. So having characters on hand who can uh, stun on their basic is ex extremely useful as well. Um, uh, to add to this list, uh, there's also Wampa who stuns uh, on his basic if the character is exposed. Uh, similarly with Zeb, I believe if the character is exposed or dazed, then uh, Zeb lands a stun. But all the others are, are pure stuns which uh, just go through a, a normal tenacity check. Um, RG is great because he's a tank as well as a stunner. So in case you're running a, a team which doesn't have a tank, uh, just put RG in. He's got an auto taunt as well. And then... Uh, uh, he tends to, uh, you know, stun quite a fair bit as well to control the battle. Um, the other section over here is uh, just uh, your, uh, um, it's, you know, stun plus one, I would say. It's, uh, you know, one level uh, higher of stun. Uh, most of these characters can both stun and dispel over here. You've got crew who can stun for two turns, uh, you know, after palp. This is, he's another character who can, uh, you know, who's got a really, really powerful stun. And it dispels everything from the uh, from the enemy, including foresight. Um, very similar to that is uh, is Thrawn's fracture, one of the best debuffs in the game. Um, you've got uh, Chopper who can stun on on uh, uh, for uh, specifically for droids and dispel them as well. And you've got Han stun, which uh, you know he starts the battle with that. And you've got uh, Juhani stun, which is. Uh, uh, unavailable so it goes through foresight so very useful stuns to have there the other two rows over here uh, i've kept other characters who can stun um, but that's really not their specialty they do other things uh, much better um, one thing you'll notice over here is that uh, bounty hunters quite a few of them have a lot of stunning options so um, if you decide to, to keep some of the bounty hunters on offense uh, they can serve as a really good uh, control mechanism now apart from stunners let me go over to the second tab over here and i have a uh, Dazers over here. Uh, in the uh, the game, you have uh, uh, a lot of the battles are won just because of turn meter manipulation. Some of the best leaders in the game, they provide uh, turn meter to their uh, their factions, and uh, it's uh, any way to shut down that turn meter gain is uh, incredibly useful. So another way of controlling is days. Um, the first section that I have over here is characters who can AOE days. Uh, you know, Wampa obviously is uh, is great. Um, Nest is great because she gets to start the battle usually fast uh, first, um, and days uh, all the opponent and reduce their turn meter. So um, I believe uh, Nest is one of the best dazers out there. Uh, Maul is slow, but uh, uh, you know he serves the purpose and is the team of uh, dazing the enemy, um, especially in a in a assist based Jedi team. Uh, Maul is extremely anti Jedi, so if you can get him in there and and apply the days on Jedi, uh, it's a, he's a good uh, uh, counter to that. Holdo is uh, great in any uh, um, resistance team which needs days to be applied. So if you're using your JTR team against uh, uh, any team which gains a lot of turn meter, like a, a first order team, for example, Holdo is uh, is great over there. Um, one of the best days is, uh, AOE days is out here is definitely Logre because not only is his days a uh, um, uh, AOE, it's also unavailable, so it goes through foresight. So that's uh, that's really uh, an excellent days to have. And I believe his days also uh, dispels, if I'm not mistaken. Um, uh, let me let me check that skill. So yes, so um, his uh, uh, his hypnotize ability dispels and uh, inflicts days on all enemies. So it's a it's a double. Uh, double control mechanism that you have out there. So it, that is definitely the best AOE days out there. Um, everyone else just applies AOE days, and but uh, Lograde dispels as well as applies AOE days. Um, the next set of characters over here that I have are uh, also uh, guys who can daze. 
but they apply days on their basic, which is again useful to have. Just like I mentioned for stunning, um, if uh, these characters get ability blocked or cooldown reduct reduced, uh, some of these characters can uh, can days on their basic, which is extremely useful to have. And uh, I've got a few other characters over there who can uh, daze as well. One thing you'll notice out here is we don't have any Jedi who can daze. That is something which the Jedi kit is uh, uh, is really lacking. So um, none of the Jedis uh, can apply daze AOE or otherwise or single shot daze on their kits, which is something which I think that Jedi really need. Um, yeah. So that is uh, essentially the days mechanism. Um, I have another uh, tab for uh, dispelling characters and dispelling is really great uh, just because uh, uh, you have uh, tanks who uh, can create a lot of nuisance on defense just because you're not able to get around them and having uh, characters who can dispel is uh, extremely helpful. The first row over here are characters who can uh, dispel uh, in mass. Um, and that's a, a really, really useful thing to have. The first three characters over here, Asajj, Sion, and uh, uh, IPD, they can uh, uh, they can dispel uh, even through foresight. So it's an unevadable dispel. So that's really useful to have against uh, you know really buff heavy teams like Jedi and and uh, uh, Resistance. Um, and then the other three, uh, the Dead Trooper, Echo, and uh, I have. Uh, um, Kira as well over here. Those three do dispel, uh, uh, and do they do dispel an AOE, but uh, it's not unevadable. So if the if the uh, enemy has foresight, then uh, it's just going to bounce right off, and it's only going to dispel the other guys who don't have foresight. So it's uh, it's a slightly less useful way of uh, dispelling, um, but. Uh, um, um, but yeah, but it is a, a dispel all the same uh, if the conditions are right. Um, Death Trooper has an additional function. His dispel also increases the cooldowns on characters which don't have uh, any buffs and it gives a healing immunity as well. So that's a, a really useful kind of a dispel. Um, and then you have uh, uh, three characters who can dispel on their basic, which is uh, again a really useful skill to have. You've got uh, Nest, uh, Darth Nihilus and Paplu. So um, even if you're not, uh, if you if you need to, uh, you know, use uh, uh, if you if you're faced with teams which gain a lot of buff buffs extremely fast and you need to dispel them quite often, uh, using a character which can dispel on its basic, like one of these three, is uh, quite useful as well. Um, you have uh, and then the next section is uh, characters who can dispel and stun, um, which is another uh, you know. Um, Another level of control that you that you can get on your uh, on your characters. You've got spirit, uh, crew, and chopper who can uh, dis both dispel and stun, and uh, and then you've got uh, a few other characters I've listed down here who can uh, uh, who can who have a dispel as well. Um, and you'll notice over here you've got a uh, plenty of Jedi's who can uh, dispel. So even though the Jedi lack the uh, days in their kit, dispel is something which uh, they do pretty well. And even some of the lesser Jedi like uh, Mace and, and Qui-Gon Jinn, I sometimes just put them in an offensive team if I just need, uh, if I'm lacking a Dispeller and I need to, to get around a taunt. Um, these guys have uh, good specials which can uh, which can take care of that. Um, in uh, On offense, I like to use uh, Revivers as well. So I have a tab over here for, for Revivers. And Revivers are... Uh, you, they typically tend to be faction specific, like the second row that I have over here. They're faction specific revives. You've got uh, Zombie who automatically revives two members of the Night Sister faction. You've got uh, um, you've got Jin who revives uh, uh, rebels. You've got uh, Jolie who revives Jedi and uh, Java Engineer who revives droids. Um, but uh, the the first row over here is uh, Universal uh, Revivers, which are extremely useful. Ewok Elder and uh, uh, Visas, these are unconditional, uh, almost, uh, you know, more than half health uh, revives, which are extremely useful to have. And these are uh, these are uh, faction agnostic. Any faction, these guys can, uh, the, the guys in the first row can uh, can go ahead and revive. Um, so Ewok Elder and Visas, I sometimes put in a team, which uh, when I'm going against uh, someone like uh, 
CLS Han Chewy, which has got a high DPS uh, output and which may take out, uh, you know, some of my team team uh, without, uh, you know, uh, me getting a turn. So I like to have these guys as an insurance option um, just so that I can get the revive up and uh, and get the tune back in. Um, so Evoke Elder and Vsauce is definitely the best. Uh, we have uh, a Han who... Uh, uh, is a better is is a better reviver under rebels just because it gives fifty percent turn meter and uh, fifty percent health to rebels, um, and Darka obviously is the best reviver for night sisters. I tend to use her ninety nine percent of the time with night sisters. Um, her revive of non factions is is conditional. I believe sixty percent or something like that. But uh, um, but she does revive all factions as well. Um, and then we've got some conditional revives like. Uh, Revan only revives uh, uh, once with the savior ability. Uh, Hera only revives. Uh, you have to preempt the revive, so you have to basically put the uh, buff on someone who needs reviving. And then you've got Talzin, um, who can revive through uh, her leadership ability, and uh, and Vando, who uh, can revive when prepared, and only light side scoundrels. So uh, very few revivers, just like uh, days. You've got very few revivers and uh, and dazers in the in the game. So you need to use these guys judiciously. And then finally, I've got uh, tenacity down over here. Now the reason I have a separate tab for tenacity down is um, a lot of teams these days have plenty of tenacity. You've got Bastilla teams. You've got uh, uh, Bosk led teams, which give a fifty percent boost to tenacity. And uh, since so much of a control is debuff based. In order for you to land those debuffs on these tenacity heavy teams, you need a character which can land tenacity down. Um, so if you're going against a tenacity heavy team like that, having one of these characters in the team can give you a high degree of control. Um, and uh, the good thing about tenacity down is uh, it can uh, it's not resistible. Um, so each of these characters, uh, there's a hundred percent chance of applying the tenacity as long as there's no foresight on that character. So, um, so that's uh, that's one good thing about tenacity down. Even through tenacity up or uh, uh, or a high tenacity uh, skill level of a, of a character, these guys are still going to land tenacity down. And uh, most of these guys, in fact, all of these guys over here land tenacity down on their basic, which is extremely useful to have as well. Um, once you land tenacity down, all your debuffs like your stuns, your uh, your uh, healing immunity, your days, all of that can uh, can land on any team at all. So um, these are some good teams, to, good uh, characters to keep in mind if you want to uh, uh, control uh, tenacity heavy teams. So that's a brief uh, overview of uh, some of the uh, the control mechanisms that I have for uh, um, for uh, offense. Let's. Uh, Let's go into the uh, the grand arena battle and uh, and see um, what uh, and and just uh, try to take down his teams. Now I'm faced up against a, a character Ben over here, uh, and uh, he is. Uh, if I look at his roster, it's not exactly uh, uh, that great. I mean, he's got Chewy C three PO, um, and I believe. Uh, crew and Bosk as well but uh, the rest of his characters are not as well modded um, his Treya is uh, let's see his Treya is only um, yeah only gear 7 so and uh, and the speed is also not much in any of these teams so I really didn't uh, uh, I thought I might take this opportunity to to try some experimental stuff, um, just because um, I'm pretty sure uh, I'm I'm going to to win this match. Um, I don't think he's going to be able to get through my defenses, um, so I I decided to go ahead and set some um, you know really goofy uh, faction specific defenses. These these are not optimal teams. Um, I just did it for the fun of it. What I did was uh, one wall. I created a, an old Republic faction wall. Um, I kept Revan with the uh, mission and Zalbar. Now, ideally, Revan should be with Jedi because ninety percent of his kit is Jedi specific. But I just wanted to experiment with something. Um, just uh, you know, uh, Revan gives an offense and crit chance boost up, which uh, you know may benefit mission. Um, I have uh, the three, the other three Jedi's in a separate team: Juhani, Bastila, and uh, uh, Jolie, which could be a really irritating team to take out just because of the 
tenacity bump, the protection bump. Um, and then I've got the rest of the old Republican and another team here. Um, then I have a scoundrel wall over here. Um, now the first team, that's actually, a, I think, a really tough team to take out. So that's got Bosk, uh, Chewy, and Han. And uh, because there are only three over here, Bosk ends up getting the uh, guard from Chewy. And that's extremely effective because that means that Bosk cannot be stunned or dazed. And uh, if you have taken down a, a regular Bosk team, you know that the, one of the ways to control Bosk is to uh, take in a team like JTR or CLS and uh, and either reduce a turn meter or stun him or, uh, or uh, uh, apply daze on him. Um, and that you're not going to be able to do with the, with this team. So it's really effective. Even taking in a, uh, your separate Han team and you try to shoot first with Han at Bosk, you're not even going to be able to stun him. So that's a, that's, that's a really effective uh, uh, person to get guard. And I've got him really fast at 289. So um, he's going to go first and, and pop his, uh, his uh, um, uh, taunt up. And then it's, uh, it's going to be a really tough to get around uh, uh, these guys. Because the other team that usually uses Han and Chewy, which is CLS Han and Chewy, that's a great team, but there's no taunt out there. So Chewy can be get targeted in that scenario. In this scenario, it's extremely difficult to to uh, get the taunt off uh, of Bosk. Plus, the fact that Bosk has frenzy anytime that uh, Han and Chewie use their specials, Bosk gets to go again, and anytime Bosk gets to go, Chewie assists. So every time Han or Chewie use their special, almost uh, it's almost two turns of Chewie that ends up happening. So that's a that's a great thing to happen. The other synergy which is there is uh, both the uh, Han and Chewie apply uh, debuffs you know, stuns and uh, um, uh, tenacity down. Um, and those debuffs end up healing Bosk as well. So um, Chewie anyway ends up healing Bosk and Han because of the guard mechanism. But uh, also, uh, uh, you know, um, the debuffs which are there on the team help to uh, to heal up Bosk. So that's a good team to have. Extremely irritating and very difficult to take down. You might need a Treya or Revan to take that down. And then I've got uh, some other uh, scoundrel teams in there. And at the back, I have, uh, I just kept a crew team in there and some Ewoks. And on uh, this wall, I've kept uh, an Admiral Akbar team and a Savage Sith team. These are B teams and uh, I don't think uh, uh, they're going to reach this wall anyway. In about uh, most of my matches I've that I've had, I've never had anyone uh, not set defenses. But about half the matches uh, that I've played in Grand Arena, I haven't been attacked. Um, they set defenses, but they look at my um, my defenses and, and then they decide not to attack anymore. So I feel that this battle is probably going to be something like that. I'm not. I'm probably not going to get attacked just because uh, uh, you know the Ross because of the roster mismatch. So I am going to uh, you know just have fun in this uh, Grand Arena. Um, what I'm going to do is to make things interesting and to demonstrate some of the uh, uh, some of the things I was talking about earlier, which is uh, synergy across factions. What I'm going to do is on offense, I will uh, uh, force myself to use uh, only uh, teams which have uh, kit synergy, but no faction synergy. So any three uh, member team that I'm going to go in with, there's going to be no faction common between each of those three so this is just uh you know i'm just going to have some fun with it just to see uh how far i can go with uh with that um, there are plenty of really good characters who uh, have synergy across other characters and other factions so i'm going to try to make some of those unique teams to see if they're able to take down uh, some of my opponent's teams now uh let me show you what my opponent has in the uh, um in the front section uh he's got a boss lead uh, bounty hunter team which uh, um, could be uh, slightly prog problematic he's got an Asajj uh, hide the uh, acolyte team um, so that's going to need a dispeller and he's got a Kira led uh, uh, scoundrel team with Vandor and L3 uh, not as much damage there but uh, uh, you know, a lot of uh, cleansing and healing so it could be irritating um, and then below he's got uh, a Sith and a First Order team. So he's got a Maul lead uh, team. 
uh, with Scion. So that's going to be a little irritating because typical counters to Maul is um, Rex Seed. Um, and uh, Scion is just going to be dispelling all of that tenacity. Um, and then you've got uh, EP lead with Tarkin and uh, uh, Vader. No, no tank over there. So um, at, as long as I get a jump on that team, I should be able to control them. And then you've got the First Order team uh, with, uh, with a single tank crew. All right. So what I'm going to do is um, I am going to try to clear one wall. It looks like this might be the easier wall to clear. So I am probably going to start here. Um, all right. So now I need to uh, let's attack the uh, the Night Sister team. Now, uh, one thing which I'd really like to use against Night Sister is Boba lead, um, just because Boba can get around the zombie taunt and uh, and his ex uh, his execute tends to uh, uh, you know prevent the the, uh, the revives that zombie gives so i'm definitely going to go with uh, with a boba lead over here now i need uh now i also need a a dispeller um and i can't use anyone from the bounty hunter faction so i am probably going to go with so if i take a look at my dispellers um and i need a mass dispeller because acolyte is going to be uh, under stealth uh I should probably go with, I can go with Death Trooper because Death Trooper acts as a, uh, his Terminate acts as another way to prevent a revive. So Death Trooper has got a good synergy out here. So let me place in my Death Trooper. And then I want a tank as well, just because, uh, you know, Asajj can sometimes act funny. Um, and one tank which uh, I really uh, like using against debuff heavy teams like Night Sisters is a uh, uh, Kanan. So even though my Kanan is not very well geared, only a G8, but uh, he thrives on debuffs. He heals a lot whenever he gets debuffed. So he's perfect against teams like this. All right. So let's go in and uh, and see if we can take the steam down. Now I do have a speed advantage over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to to prevent. Uh, um, Acolyte from, well, actually, I'm just going to ability block uh, those two, and then I'm going to dispel. Okay, so Acolyte went to stealth, which is fine. Um, I'm just going to get the taunt up over here. All right. Now, uh, I can't target Acolyte, but I can uh, try to get rid of uh, Asajj. There you go. So Asajj is not going to come back anymore. Now I just need to wait for the um, uh, the the spell to come around, and then I should be able to... Oh, okay. All right. So Kanan was taken out. Acolyte hits really, really hard. Okay, hope I don't lose my... All right, let's get rid of the... Okay, so I lost that trooper, so this makes it tricky. I need to make sure that I finish Acolyte. There you go. That's one thing I love about Boba. He's a really hard hitter. All right. So lost uh, both of them, um, but they were B tunes. They were really not my uh, star tunes, so I don't feel too bad about losing them. But uh, Boba was the main one over here to give the, get the victory, prevented the uh, you know irritating revives that uh, Asajj could have had. All right, so that's one team taken care of. Um, let's see. <clears throat> now for the. Uh, Hmm. Should I tackle? All right, let me tackle the uh, Bosk Boba Dengar team. Now this team has got Bosk with a Zeta, uh, not double Zeta, but even single Zeta is irritating, and it's a G12 Bosk. 
um, what's the speed on that BOSC? 194. So what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to take my Thrawn in there to fracture him and then work on the other bounty hunters. And uh, I'll uh, probably go with an old Ben lead. Now, uh, one thing I love about the uh, um, Thrawn synergy is with anyone who has a ability block feature, um, just because Thrawn, Thrawn on his basic can uh, stun a character who's got ability, ability block and that stun cannot be resisted. So all characters like Boba, Old Ben, who have mass ability block features, they have great synergy with Thrawn. Um, just because, uh, you know, once they land the ability block, Thrawn can just uh, do his basic and, and stun them for a turn, which is great. So I'm definitely going to go with the uh, Old Ben over here uh, to reduce turn meter and, and uh, you know, prevent uh, those guys from using their specials. Let's see. So old Ben lead and uh, Empire Thrawn. And who else can we use for the third? I can't use any Jedi or Empire here. Um, so another, so let's see what uh, old Ben does on his leadership. So gain, so Empire, uh, so everyone gains evasion and they gain turn meter whenever they evade an attack. So anyone who naturally gains foresight is uh, is great because uh, you know they gain foresight. They they uh, and then when the enemy attacks them, um, they uh, get rid of the foresight and the, and the, your your tune gains thirty percent turn meter. Uh, obviously, most of the foresight tunes are uh, Jedi. You know you've got Qui Gon Jinn, Grandmaster Yoda, and uh, Hermit Yoda, and I can't use any of them. But uh, I believe we have uh, uh, one Knight Sister uh, spirit who generates a lot of uh, foresight by herself. And she could be a good fit over here. She stuns, dispels, so would be pretty useful for control as well. So I'm going to use these three and go into the battle with Bosk. All right, so very first thing I just want to fracture this guy apply ability block let's see if i can i probably won't be able to stun dengar because of the tenacity up but i'm just gonna stun this guy and reduce some more turn meter get the <clears throat> taunt up so now i can uh, i don't really need to give protection to anyone but as you can see bosk has his uh, ability block up so i'm just going to use my basic and stun this guy and <clears throat> and i think i'm going to go and fracture bosk again yeah, that's one thing to be wary of. If his Boba had high offense, can very easily take out uh, Night Sister since she's uh, quite squishy. I'm just going to stun that one over there. Ability block. And okay, Boba is gone. And I can, I don't have my. Um, so I can do one of two things. I can switch to Spirit to top up a protection and uh, get uh, um, get the turn back because I believe you know if I switch to Spirit, Thrawn is going to end up going first because boss turn meter is slightly less. Or I could uh, uh, and then I could fracture Thrawn uh, uh, boss, but or, or I could just stun him just like that. I'm going to try to take out. Uh, Bosk, <clears throat> stun that one. All right. <clears throat> Top up a little bit over there. Stun and gone. All right. Okay, so this is done. <clears throat> 53 banners. 
Okay, so two teams are gone and now let me try to take out the third team. So who can I use for this? So L3 is going to be taunting a lot. Um, and she's going to be getting a, a lot of turn meters. So days would be useful. Stun definitely would be very useful and uh, any dispelling would be useful. Um, let me see who I can go with. I could probably do an Asajj lead and uh, yeah, Asajj dispels. Maybe I can put in Scion in as well. Um, he dispels as well and uh, can act as a tank um, because these guys don't have much damage. Let me see. So Asajj. and Scion and then I can let's see who else I can put in mm. so you've got the stun covered you've got dispel covered let's see who else can apply days mm -hmm. Uh, I don't want to use any of my AoE days characters. Maybe Logri? No. None of these are Jedi, otherwise I would have used Maul. And I don't want to waste my Nest or Wampa. Um, hmm, maybe Holdo. Okay, yeah, I think I can use my Holdo. So Asajj. Let's see, Night Sister. Asajj, Scion, and Holdo. All right, so that should control the uh, turn meter. We've, I think we've got the offense over here. Hmm. Okay, let's dispel the protection up. Another reason to have uh, good dispellers over here is you don't want uh, um, this guy Vando Chewy to gain any buffs. Because once he gains buffs, he gets prepared. Uh, there, he's got a buff. Let's just continue with the AoEs. Now prepared is one thing which cannot be dispelled, so that's uh, that's why you need to just prevent him from getting prepared. All right, let's see if we can take this one down. Well, holder was useless, didn't uh, daze much. All right, dispel so that we can so that he doesn't get prepared. And try to stun or take him out. Okay. This guy is. Oh, one more thing about uh, uh, Vandor is you need to use AoEs every time because anytime that you hit any of his allies and not hit him, he gains 10% turn meter, which is what 10% protection, which is what just happened. So anytime that you can use AoEs, you have to. In every single turn, that damage uh, uh, um, this guy. Otherwise, he's going to end up getting a uh, protection back up. That's the problem. Even if you manage to daze, L3 just cleanses it off. No worries. Um, I've got that taken care of. Let's just finish off L3 and then we can open up this wall
yeah holder was definitely useless over here i could have uh, gone with some other character l3's cleanse is just so powerful All right, so this one is done as well, 52 banners. And let's see what's behind. He's got Ewoks and Troopers. Hmm. All right, let's come back to this later after we open up this wall. Right, so Maul and Savage and Sion. Um, hmm. EP Vader Tarkin. Let me try this team first. They don't have a tank, so it should be relatively easy to take out. Um, let's see what the speed of the Vader is. So he's got a speed set on him and 217. So with the bonuses, he's got 16 for himself, 16 for EP, and 8 for Tarkin. So 32. Oh yeah, he's going to be what, 257 speed, the Vader. So reasonably fast. I don't think my Rex is as fast as that, but good thing about that is Rex will anyway get turn meter um, once Vader does his AoE. So I think I'll go with the Rex lead over here just because there are too many, uh, um, too many debuffs in that team and I don't want to give uh, the um, that turn meter gain to uh to the empire team over there so who else can i use with the rex so ep vader and tarkin they don't have any healer with them so i think i might go with the rex talzin combination um i do want a tank in there preferably a, a pre-taunting tank so let's see i think i'll go in with sure um yep uh, no factions common. Yep, that's right. All right. So I'm going to go in with uh, with this combo and see how it does. Okay, so Vader went first. And Dispel. Let's get rid of uh, EP. Now, one thing you've noticed over here, I did not take in any Rebels because uh, EP has got a lot of anti-Rebel synergy. Uh, Vader has got both Rebel and Jedi, anti-Jedi synergy, so uh, good thing I don't have any uh, Rebels or Jedi here. Plus Tarkin also has got uh, his AoE, uh, Rebels can't resist uh, it, um, which is the, not the AoE, but the AoE debuff. So uh, if you can, avoid taking Rebels and um, Jedi against these guys, unless it's obviously it's something like Bastila Jedi. Alright, let's see if we can. Get rid of Palp. Now the rest are pretty harmless, so Plague should eat them. Okay, that guy's gone. I used to run these guys uh, in arena for a long time. Um, Shore, uh, Rex, Talzin, and Wampa. Um, they were uh, my go-to team for uh, for a long time, at least three or four months. Um, really enjoyed running that team. I used to initially run it with um, um, Old Ben and Show, but then changed to GK and uh, and Thrawn. It's a really fun team to run. All right, now who else can I take out? Let me let me go for the Maul team. And with Maul, I like to use R2 just because of the reduced evasion. Um, they've got Scion in there, no Zeta, but uh, he's gonna be tanking. Um, and Savage has got uh, Zeta. Um, so I'm gonna take in R2 and I'm gonna take in Visas as well, just because uh, they're all Sith and Visas is gonna assist um, and these guys have got a lot of debuffs so i need uh, uh well r2 is going to cleanse uh, debuffs from uh, from light side allies and visas is going to cleanse that as well so 
that's that's going to be good both play pain and days can be cleansed pretty easily um i think but i do need someone with high damage just because more uh, just because uh, savage and scion can be tough to take out um so i might just go with grandmaster yoda leadership i've got it zera as well probably my my biggest regret zera so far used it for all of 2 weeks um and this leadership does give tenacity as well so it'll help resist some of those debuffs and if i r- resist the debuff then yoda is going to get a uh, turn meter up which is great and a critical chance up and critical damage up and i get tenacity if i suffer a debuff so yeah a yoda lead will be great for this i can't take in any more jedi so i decided to go with r2 for evasion down and visas for the anti sith synergy um and yeah these guys are going to keep each other clean and visas can revive the other two if they go down uh, r2 can hide them lots of foresight going around and uh, and stun is also there couple of stuns okay let's go in <clears throat> let me get some stealth over here on yoda uh didn't help all right at least yoda got tenacity up um let me see if i can oh too bad um visa has got days so she's not going to be assisting anymore let me see if i can stun this guy oh man this guy hits so hard with the defense penetration okay so visa has at least cleansed herself so that's great a lot of cleanse in this team which is great against a uh, um debuff heavy teams oh savage okay let me take a big hit down Yoda missed. All right. Yep, you need someone with big damage against a uh, Savage. All right. So this one is taken care of and only one team left. No. I'm always a little uh, careful about uh, crew teams just because uh, they have uh, you know so much synergy and so much turn meter gain that it becomes a uh, difficult to control them and so much health and protection regeneration um so even though they're only g11 and let's see what the speeds are moderate for health and absolutely no speed on it these guys 175 so 205 so kylo is 205 and fox fox okay so i'm going to let's see what i want to take in i think i'll use cls just because uh, of the counter chance and uh, and yeah these guys have got uh, probably going to be resisting a lot of debuffs which means that uh, cls will get to go a lot um who else do i put in there i need someone with a days um i think i'll go in with logri well he is weak but logri i think is important to to control these guys with turn meter reduction as well as uh, stripping them of buffs and who else do i use Do I need a tank? Hmm. Maybe I'll just uh, throw JTR in there just for the turn meter reduction and additional days. Yeah, probably overkill, but uh, uh, better to be safe. <clears throat> All right. Let me reduce turn meter over here. 
and over here and over here and give days to everyone right i should probably use healing immunity here and stun this guy because he's got defense down what does this do all allies gain 20 percent turn meter okay let's get uh, some more turn meter to these guys see if we can get rid of uh, I can either stun Kylo or I can reduce turn meter on this guy. Let me stun Kylo just because his AoE can uh, can give turn meter to everyone. And stun Kylo again since he's got more turn meter. And reduce turn meter over there. Stun this guy and then try to take out Kylo. <clears throat> Healing immunity. That's why uh, Ray is so great against uh, First Order. Healing immunity, days, turn meter removal. Let's stun. Oh, this guy doesn't get stunned easily. All right, that was easy. Probably overkill, but uh, I don't want to take chances against First Order. All right, I've got... Uh, a Jedi team and I've got a Rebel team. Well, definitely Wampa for the Rebel team. Let me take out the Jedi team with Vader first. Uh, who else inflicts dots? We've got... Uh... Oh, I can't use Sid. Um, we've got Nihilus also I can't use since he's Sith. We do have Tuscan Shaman. All right. And let's see what tanks we have. Uh, let me just put the zombie in there. Um, at least a zombie will constantly taunt. <clears throat> and these guys lack damage, so. All right, so the way to take out these teams is uh, teams with GK Barris, and the other variation is, you know, you get fives in there, Hermit Yoda, um, in this case, Ben. These teams lack uh, a lot of uh, DPS. Um, so, but they, they do have a lot of staying power. So I like to use Vader against them just because I keep applying dots and uh, they, they just finish themselves off with the dots. And because they have no damage, they really, you know, they really can't do anything about it. Vader also has got uh, unavailable and unresistible um, uh, ability block on Jedi which is uh, extremely nice to have. Let's get rid of this one. So the tenacity down from zombie is coming in useful. All right, this should do it next time he takes a turn. All right, 53 banners. So that was easy. Let's uh, go on to um, Rebels. Um, I can solo just with Wampa, but let me uh, see whoever, who else is out there, Universal Leader. Um, so that's one good thing about using these templates is you can see in red the tunes that you've already used up and go with the um, you know, 
others which uh, which you haven't used. So let me go back and see what other teams are left at the top just to make sure I don't use up any teams I don't want to. So I've got Evox and uh, and Troopers. Okay, that shouldn't be a problem. Still have my Treya left. Um, all right, so what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to use um, Universal Leader Sid. Yep. Sid. Just because of the extra... So Sid's leadership gives an extra critical chance and critical damage, 30% critical damage. And Wampa can definitely use that. <clears throat> we can solo this just for the Wampa, but uh, uh, what do you, I mean, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and use three people. Let's see, who else can I use here? Um, Rebels, right? Who else can use crit damage? Do I need a tank in here? Yeah, let me. Okay, let me throw in Storm to Pahan for uh, some extra turn meter. All right, this should be this should be fun. There, that's another good synergy between Sid and Wampa. The uh, Sid applies exposes, and Wampa stuns on uh, on basic on an expose. All right. Let's go back to the last wall and wrap this up. Now, who else do I have left? I have Treya and I've got Nihilus. So in one of these I can use Treya, the other one I can use Nihilus. Now the um, Evox team is going to be assisting a lot. Um, so I can probably use Treya over here. Who else can I use with Treya? And the Evox team is going to be... I can probably save Nest for the other team. Maybe a healer. No, can't use GK. Resistance and Rebel. These guys don't have any... Well, this is... Hmm. Let me use a... So, let's see, do I have anyone who can daze? Um, I do have Maul. And I do have Nest. Okay, let me go ahead and use Nest then. <clears throat> I think I've got more than enough to take out the other team. All right, so. Wicket, Chirpa, Logri. So let me put this on that. Actually, you know what? I can just put it on auto. <clears throat> no real synergy over here, but I'm just uh, using up tunes to uh, just using up the rest of my tunes now. All right, full 54 banners. And the last team, let's see what else is left. Troopers, I can use. Nihilus, I can use a tank GK. Um, resistance and rebels. All right, I can use a. Do I have a healer in here? Hmm. I nah, probably don't need. This should be enough. <clears throat> OK. 
Okay. First one cannot gain buffs. Who don't I want to gain buffs? Yeah, this should be easy enough. All right. Last few teams, really not much synergy, but you know, I just wanted to get the battles over with. So I have completely cleared the board um, with without using any team of the same faction. So this was a, a factionless offensive on this uh, Grand Arena battle. Um, yep, I think I had fun with it. So just some way to make it uh, a little, uh, little less boring. So... I don't believe my opponent is going to attack me, so I think this is just a... Um, I'll wait till tomorrow, but I think it's just going to be a plain win. But I had uh, fun uh, going through these battles and talking about them. Hope you found it useful as well. Um, let me know in the comments if there's uh, anything specific that you'd like to see in the next one, um, or uh, you know if there's anything, um, any other strategy that you'd like me to cover. Um, I will catch you guys later. Thanks for watching.